In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Special welcome to Mr. Magner's mentor group. This was to be your mentor mass. I look forward to seeing uh, the mentor groups when they come for mass. Sorry I can't see you in person, but I'm uh, very glad to be able to pray with you and especially to pray for your concerns today and the concerns of your family as we gather virtually uh, still to praise God, to ask for God's forgiveness, and to be fed in this reading of the Holy Scriptures. As we begin our prayer together, we recall that God sent Jesus among us to love us and to forgive us. And it is this Jesus that we aim to follow more closely during these days of Lent. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Now, mighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. The assembly condemned Susanna to death. But Susanna cried aloud, O eternal God, you know what is hidden and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am about to die, though I have done none of the things with which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer. As she was being led to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel? To condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel the elders said, Come, sit with us and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these two far from each other, that I may examine them. After they were separated one from the other, he called one of them and said, How you have grown evil with age. Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent, and freeing the guilty. Although the Lord says, The innocent and the just you shall not put to death. Now then, if you were a witness, tell me under what tree you saw them together. Under a mastic tree, he answered. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, Offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you. Lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me under what tree you surprised them together. Under an oak, he said. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you also your head. For the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two so as to make an end of you both. 
the whole assembly cried aloud, Blessing God who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, for by their own words Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor. They put them to death. Thus was innocent blood spared that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked man, says the Lord, but rather in his conversion, that he may live. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him. And he sat down and he taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring up against him. Jesus bent down and began to write in the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who was, out, who was without sin to be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground, and in response they went away, one by one, beginning with the elders. So Jesus was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Pharisees and scribes are up to their old tricks again. They're setting traps for Jesus. They know that Jesus is becoming recognized as an agent of mercy, that he eats with sinners, that he hangs out with tax collectors, that he heals on the Sabbath. 
But likewise, Jesus is also known to give Moses his due respect, and he doesn't directly challenge Mosaic law. So what do they do? They use, they manipulate a person to try to make a point. How often do we find ourselves in the same place? The scribes and the Pharisees bring to Jesus a woman caught in adultery, and they use her to make their argument. And they make Jesus choose. If Jesus says that she should be spared, then he violates the dictates of justice. If Jesus says she should be stoned, then he ignores the call of mercy. And Jesus, well, he refuses to play their game or fall into their trap. Instead, he tells them, let the one among you who is without sin to be the first to throw a stone. The first to throw a stone. The first stone. Do you ever get hit with the first stone? Sometimes it's a knockout. Other times it's painful. It's not always a physical knockout. The first stone can come through words too. Sometimes people preface a sentence with not for nothing or just saying. We might say that these things don't bother us when we hear them, but we know they do. The first stoners, they know how to hit us. There are times when we throw the first stone too. Talking about somebody, helping to destroy a reputation, refusing to let somebody grow from a sinful moment. What if Jesus was there, tracing words in the sand, standing in the breach between the angry, the self-righteous, the hypocritical crowd, and the target of their judgmental denunciation. Notice what happens though. Jesus doesn't say that the woman has not sinned. He knows that she has. He knows that we have. Jesus does not rescind the law. His message to the crowd is do not sin yourselves. There is another message here as well. Leave the judging of others to me. And as for you, have mercy. My old moral theology professor, Father Jim Keenan, defines mercy as the willingness to enter into the chaos of another. The willingness to enter into the chaos of another. Now, you and I are spending a lot of time together with some pretty familiar people, members of our family, in my case, members of my Jesuit community. We can easily fixate on their faults, we can pick up imaginary stones that we want to hur hurl at them. Or we can take this time we have to examine, to reflect, to look within, to find where we need God to enter our chaos, to forgive us, to heal us, to make us ready, ready to celebrate Easter, ready to welcome the risen Christ into our hearts and lives. Of course, that is the invitation of Lent, to get to know this Jesus, this Jesus who writes in the ground and also writes in our hearts. You're invited to get to know this God of love, who unreservedly entered into the chaos of our human condition. What a reckless act of love, so profound, so healing, so freeing, that it can make us forget all about holding tightly onto stones of judgment. You and I are made in the same image of this God of love. And because this God became human, you and I can become divine. May we offer others the very same gift of mercy that we receive from Him. Now let us bring our concerns and our needs before our loving God. So we pray for uh, the Plati family who lost their father to coronavirus and all those grieving the loss of loved ones. For them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Chris S., Richard C. Mack, Dr. Arnold Way, uh, Bill W., and Dorothy Ryan, and all people 
in our community and outside of our community who are struggling with the virus. So for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Molly T. and all the nurses at MSKCC risking their lives to care for can cancer patients amidst the virus and for all healthcare workers during this time. So for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We, play, we pray for Glenda Grossa for this intention. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray, God, for an end to the virus and for peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for Mr. Magner and his mentor group that this time may be a time of reflection and a time of walking more closely with Jesus. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we offer you these our prayers. We ask that you would hear us and answer us in your perfect wisdom and love. For we make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, that will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, that being moved to compassion, you may both pardon our offenses and direct our wavering hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your Spirit, you move human hearts, that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O oh Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you feast ceaseless thanks, with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation. 
the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought to us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you in need of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by, by your cross, cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us his pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May you make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the bishops in your entire people. But just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles, Ignatius Loyola, John the Baptist, and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, bread, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lord. My Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy to enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Set free from their sins, O Lord, we pray. The people who call upon you, that living, holy way of life, they may be kept safe from every trial. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord with our lives. Thanks be to God.